DNA is a program, a set of instructions that tells a cell what proteins to produce. And then those proteins perform the essential functions of the cell. So we can think of living cells as miniature computers and essentially the software that controls these cells is DNA. In the computer we have zeros and ones, which are the binary code. In the cell, the DNA, this quaternary code, the four letters, if we insert new DNA code into the cells, we can get them to make proteins they perhaps wouldn't otherwise have made. In the same way we can take a program from one computer and put it on another, we can take DNA code and insert it into the cell. At Microsoft Research, we've been developing a programming language that allows a programmer to write a description of what they want the cell to perform. And the software works out the DNA code that's needed in order for the cell to behave in that way. The key thing about our software is that the programmer doesn't have to know any DNA code. We're in the Plant Sciences Laboratory at Cambridge University, run by Jim Hasselhoff. And this is where they actually engineer the synthetic systems that we design on a computer. This whole migration from what was a field of biology and looking at biological functions is moving directly into a field where you're information processing. Computers allow you to produce a blueprint for a circuit that you could build. And secondly, they allow you to tinker with the parameters of the elements in that blueprint to give you an idea of how that will perform ahead of the laborious task of building it. Once the DNA code has been synthesized into nucleic acid sequences, then those sequences can be inserted into the cells. And that's what happens in this lab. We can take DNA from one cell, for example, a cell in a jellyfish, it tells them how to make proteins that allow the jellyfish to glow in the dark. If we take that DNA and put it into another cell, for example, a bacterium, then the bacterium will read those instructions and be able to glow in the dark. So that we write a code which instructs the cell to make a protein that sticks to a signaling molecule. And the combination of the receiver protein and the molecule then activates a protein that fluoresces. So the idea would be you take a sample of drinking water and mix it with the cells. And then if the water contains a pollutant such as arsenic, the cells will then change color or fluoresce in response. Well, all of the technologies that we need to feed ourselves, to clothe ourselves, to provide materials for the modern world derive from non-renewable sources. And we need to move towards renewable sources and to use sustainable technologies. And largely they're biologically based. And so the ability to reprogram biological systems is, a, is hugely valuable in that endeavour. The ability to manipulate cells lies at the heart of our ability to understand disease because disease affects cells and if we can understand how the cell works and reprogram how the cell works, we could in, in, in principle reprogram the cells of our immune system to fight disease better. In terms of food, yes, our ability to engineer essentially more efficient ways of turning the sun's energy into food could allow us to feed a growing population. In terms of energy, again, our ability to transform the sun's energy into biofuels or into electricity directly could help solve many of the problems we face today in terms of providing energy for an increasingly industrialized planet. It's the way of the future. We anticipate that in the next 5, 10, 20 years time, the scale of circuits that we'll certainly be able to produce and will want to produce is far beyond the ability of humans to, to model and that will clearly require this kind of technology. So we, we're on a trajectory here. There's a close integration between software design and modeling and biological assembly. Yeah.